Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have indefinite integral of x times natural log of x over the square root of x squared minus 1 dx. So pause the video if you want to try it on your own. I'm going to jump right in. First, I'm going to make a substitution, and then I'm going to use another integration technique. So for the substitution, I decided to go ahead and let t equal the square root of x squared minus 1. And then I need to figure out what dt is in terms of dx. Instead of taking the derivative right away, what I like to do is square both sides first, so that process is a little nicer. So t squared equals x squared minus 1. Now differentiating both sides, we have 2t dt equals 2x dx. So those two can twos cancel out. So t dt is basically x dx, which I'm happy about because, look, here's x dx. Great. And then this square root of x squared minus 1, that's just my t. So the only issue is that now I have ln of plain old x right here. So I need to solve for x in terms of t, and I'm going to do so using the fact that t squared equals x squared minus 1. So that means x squared equals t squared plus 1. And so x equals plus or minus the square root of t squared plus 1. So how do we contend with this plus or minus? How do I know what to work with or what to do? Well, look back at the original integral. The domain is restricted, my integrand's domain, because notice here I have a natural log of x. So x has to be greater than 0. We know the domain of natural logs are restricted, right? On top of that, x can't equal positive 1 or negative 1. So not only x has to be greater than 0, it also can't be positive 1. But I don't really have issues so long as I choose the positive radical right here. Good? I have no limits of integration, so it's not like this is going to cause a problem for me right now. And then if I choose x greater than 0, I don't have to even worry about the negative 1. Okay, so we're not being sloppy. We are intentionally choosing the positive because of the domain restriction from the original integrand. Got it? Okay, good. So I think we're ready to rewrite this whole integral now in terms of t. So we're going to have ln x is positive square root t squared plus 1. And then remember, this x dx right here is simply that's right, t dt. Let me color code for you all. x dx is t dt, so I'll attach that right here, t dt, over square root of x squared minus 1 is t. How are we doing? Okay, good. So then, oh, this is just fabulous. These t's cancel out. Love it. And then now I'm left with integral natural log square root t squared plus 1 dt. And then to proceed from here, we're going to use integration by parts, similar to what I did yesterday, but not as messy in the end. Before I actually go ahead and do the integration by parts, let's use our log properties to rewrite the integrand. So I can rewrite this as natural log t squared plus 1 to the 1 half power dt. And then let me move that 1 half just all the way outside of the integral. Why not? ln t squared plus 1 dt. That helps simplify things quite a bit so that now I have nicer functions to work with for my integration by parts. So u is going to be the logarithm, natural log t squared plus 1, and then dv is just dt. So du, derivative of ln t squared plus 1, 1 over t squared plus 1, times the derivative of t squared plus 1 in the numerator, dt. And then v is just going to be plain old t. Good? Okay, from here, using our by parts formula, we're going to have 1 half sitting outside, don't forget that, uv, so that's t ln t squared plus 1 minus integral v du, so t times 2t is going to give me 2t squared over t squared plus 1 dt. Boom. Okay, perfect. Now look here. We have, exactly, a rational function in t, polynomial in the top, polynomial in the bottom. The denominator is not bottom heavy. It's not of a higher degree. So you could long divide, or you know I'm always going to show you a way to weasel out of the long division if there is one. So 1 half t ln t squared plus 1 
The way to weasel out of it is basically try to make the numerator match the denominator so you can cancel. So let me start off by taking that two out. Then I would just have t squared, right? Over t squared plus one. But I wanna make the numerator match the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead, add one and subtract one. And that should do it. That should do it. So we can break up that integrand into two terms. Let me just rewrite everybody so we don't lose someone. So this t squared plus one divided by t squared plus one is just gonna be one minus, and then now I have this one over t squared plus one right here. And then look how fabulous. I mean, we can integrate both of these, no big deal. Good? Okay, perfect. So here we go. I'll distribute the one half at the same time too. So one half t natural log t squared plus one minus, now antiderivative of one is gonna be t, so I'd have minus two t, but then the one half cancels, so it's just minus t, and then plus, because this negative will distribute, the one half and the two has, have canceled now, and this is just gonna be tan inverse of t. Tan inverse of t plus c, beautiful. Beautiful. And then just go back. Remember, originally, we had let t equal the square root of x squared minus 1. So it's time to bring it all home and rewrite everything in terms of x. So we've got 1 half square root x squared minus 1. Natural log. t squared is just x squared minus 1 without the radical plus 1 minus square root x squared minus 1 plus tan inverse square root x squared minus 1 plus c. And then, of course, we're always on the lookout. Can we simplify further? Indeed, these 1's cancel. And then we can use log properties, move the exponent on the 2 all the way out front to cancel with the 1 half. Oh, that's going to look so nice. So our final cleaned up answer for the world is square root x squared minus 1 natural log of x minus square root x squared minus 1 plus tan inverse square root x squared minus 1 plus c. Voila. I would box that with immense pride. That was a job well done, everybody. Did you like that one? To be perfectly honest, I may have already done it years back. Who knows? I know some of you very thoroughly keep up with the playlist of Integral of the Day. Anyways, if you have any suggestions, feel free to submit them. You can just email them to me, mathwithprofessorv at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, same handle, mathprofessorv. Tell me if you solve this differently. I'm sure there's more than one approach. Maybe you do the biparts straight away without a substitution first, a little aggressive, but maybe if, you, if your skills are up for it, why not? And leave in the comments below your thoughts on this integral. I hope you all enjoyed it. That's all for now. If you need to review any calculus topics and you need a full-length video lecture, then you've come to the right place. Everything is neatly organized into playlists for your navigating pleasure and ease. <laughs> so happy viewing. Thanks so much for your support. Love you all, and I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.